Peace, 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 family. How we doing out there? Grand Rapids to the multitude. I already know what time it is. Time for that early rise and show of coffee and crypto. Facebook world, how we doing? Peace, peace, peace. Grand Rising to the multitude over there. How's everybody doing this rising? Let me see. I think this might be off. Hold on. Let me see. What we, what we trading on? Uh, let me see what this thing is trading on on the actual uh, chart. 76. Okay. So it's not off too much. 77.15. Okay. All right. So not off too much. Not off too much. I'm going to uh, give it a little second. Let a couple people pile in. Let people come on into the uh, show. Uh, also, if you can, family, please help assist me in sharing this out. Please help assist me in sharing this out. Let me go ahead and share it out myself via uh, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, IG. Just give me one second. How's everybody doing this rising for those that are tuning in? Let me, see, let me get this up and open. Grand Rising, Grand Rising, Queen, how we doing? Peace, broski. Peace, King. Wholeness, wholeness. How we doing, beloved? Yeah, let me go ahead and share this out. Family, if y'all can, please help assist me in sharing this out as well, if possible. Please help assist me in sharing this out as well. There we go. Okay, yeah, I got that. Let me go ahead and slide this over here to share this out. Peace, 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 Brother Kennedy. Exactly. How we doing? Miss Townsend. Cool, cool. Thank you for the share. Thank you for the share. How's everybody doing in crypto land right now? I know for a fact those that have been here for a while uh, should be in the positive right now. Those that have been here for a while should be in the positive right now. Oh, hold on, let me see. There we go. Go ahead and get logged into there. All right, so yeah, just share this out. We'll give it a couple of minutes. Uh, we're going, we're going uh, live at 7.15. That's why I started this up a little early, let people fill on in. Uh, it is 7.11, so about four more minutes. Got about four more minutes before we, uh, before takeoff. And let me just check in with everything. Make sure everything's up and running correctly. Uh, let me see. What am I looking for here? Also, family, let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if I'm if, if I'm coming through clearly. Also, let me know if y'all can see the screen clearly, please. Let me know if I can be heard and if you can see the screen clearly, please. Take this over here. Slide this in on a couple of individuals. See everybody starting to come in now. Let me know if I can be heard, please, on both sides, um, loud and clear. Okay, thank you. That's on the Facebook side of things. If somebody can let me know over here in YouTube world, if I can be heard clearly, please let me know.
There we go. Get this thrown out to a couple of spots. So what I'm doing right now is I'm sharing this out on a couple of platforms. Uh, sending it to a couple of individuals that I know wanted me to send it to them. Uh, let me get this out real quick. Let me get this out. Peace, peace, peace. Grand Rising. Grand Rising. Okay, so I'm good on YouTube. I'm good on Facebook. We got about one more minute before we take off. We got a couple of stories, and definitely we're going to be taking a look at these charts. Just trying to figure out where, where Bitcoin and the rest of the crypto space is going to go from here. Um, you know, do we rally the 8,000? Do we pull back to 70, 100, 7,000 and below? You know what I mean? If we rally the 8,000, are we going to 10,000? You know, these are a lot of the questions that a lot of individuals, uh, be wondering about. So let me get all this. There we go. Yeah, let me get this shared out. Let me get this shared out. So yeah, tearing this out to a couple of individuals real quick before we take off. Okay, hold on. Let me uh switch headphones. It's saying low battery. Give me one second. Let me switch these out. I was just sitting there talking to myself for a second. Uh, the YouTube world, not maybe not Facebook, but I was just sitting there talking to myself on YouTube because it was muted. Anytime I change these headphones over, it does mute. So uh, for those that are listening in on uh, YouTube right now, please let me know if y'all can hear me. Please let me know if y'all can hear me. Please let me know if y'all can hear me. And then we're about to take off and get into the first story. Um, right now, um, I mean, where, where, where does individuals think that we're going where we just, just just you know ballpark figures for anybody that wants to uh you know kind of guess where does everybody think that we're going you know what's your expectation we going uh anybody looking at 10,000 anybody looking at 5,000 what is your what is your gut tell you that we're going is this a pump fake is they just pulling the people in so they can pull the rug from up under them I mean, there's a lot of liquidity being put out there into the world right now. Um, you know, individual whales could be looking at it like, OK, there's all this free money out here. Let's push the price a little bit, you know, push the envelope, get individuals to FOMO in, push the price up a little bit and then knock this thing out. You know what I mean? Uh, one of the good reasons why you want to have a hedge, some sort of a hedge put together. As far as if prices do drop. How do you minimize the amount of losses that you may take or maximize the amount of profit that you could have taken? Um, it's a lot of individuals that get into this space and actually see a nice amount of increase. But because they don't understand the volatility of fluctuation of the market, that profit goes down into a negative. And once again, because they don't understand the volatility and the fluctuation of the market, they end up selling for a loss. And then usually if they're still interested in the market buying back in at higher prices once it recovers and goes even above where they bought and sold at. You know what I mean? So it's real important that individuals want to learn 
um, at least the basics of te technical analysis in my opinion. At least the basic technical analysis in my opinion. So you can have some type of, um, hold on, one second. There we go. All right. I apologize for that. Uh, DG King said we're going to 9,000. She said we're going to 9,000. Now, this is the thing. When individuals do make um, price suggestions, right, what do we usually base that off of? Or what are you basing it off of? Is it, um, you know, a specific indicator, specific uh, pattern that you've uh, put together that you may have measured out that, you know, has a um, measured move of 9,000 or anything to that effect? Let me see. I think I shared this out to. I think I shared this out to a nice couple of uh, individuals. Let me make sure. Wait, what? Okay, hold on. Something happened on the. Something just happened on Facebook. They kicked me out. Hold on. I didn't want to. Let me do that over. Give me one second, family. Give me one second. Something just happened on Facebook where they uh they ended my video. So let me go back in here and start this up again. Let me go back in here and start this up again. Real quick. It's gonna take me like two minutes. And we can get into the first story in our actuality. And why is this okay? Hold on. I wonder why it kicked me out like that. Interesting. All right, let's go to live video. Let me knock myself back in real quick. Let me lock myself back in. Because I don't know why they kicked me out like that. Let me try to lock myself back in real quick. Hopefully, I don't start getting any type of resistance to uh kick back from uh Facebook. Let me try to lock myself back in right there. Open that up. Title. Hold on. There we go. Um, there we go. Hmm, why did you just and AMA? Just ask me anything. All right, there we go. And we oh, hold on. Going on, what's going on? What's going on? Where is let me make sure everything's coming through clearly over here though. I don't see hold on. Okay, yeah, let me go back to share screen application. There we go. Okay, we locked in. Let's go. Three, two, one. Peace, power, and prosperity, family. How we doing out there? Let me reintroduce myself. My name is the Bitcoin Block Bully, also known as Chicago Crypto Hustler. I want to introduce everybody and thank you for coming out to the show, Early Rising Crypto, Coffee and Crypto with the Bitcoin Block Bully. Where we go through, you know, some of the top stories in the market, um, look at the top 20 coins within the industry. Also, we tend to take a look at the biggest gainers, the biggest losers, do a little bit of technical analysis, and also do a, a AMA, which is an ask me anything. If you got any questions about anything in the space, if I'm able to answer it, I will. If I'm not, you know, I'll admit I can't answer it. Um, also, if you got any coins that you're interested in that you may want me to take a look at, you can also do that. Um, also, let me put a short disclaimer out there. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not Into this financial advice is only to be taken as 
uh, entertainment and or education. Um, so, you know, take it for what it's worth. It's just going to be us, you know, sitting back politicking for the next, you know, 30, 40 minutes, maybe an hour, depending on how long it takes us to get through the information. Also, I'm not a tax advisor. I cannot and I will not give any type of tax advice on this show. So, you know, just sit back, soak up the information. If you got questions, ask them. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and kick it off. Thank everybody that's tuning in right now via Facebook and YouTube. I thank everybody that's tuning in right now via Facebook and YouTube. Um, in fact, I think I need to go. Let me real quick. Hold on real quick, family. Let me try. Okay, there we go. What I want to do is I want to erase. I want to erase that uh that last video so people aren't still tuning in to the old one because like I said, it did kick me out. So let me get rid of that last one. Let me delete that. And then we'll get into the first story, which is uh pretty much speaking about the markets and where we're going with the market. Let me see. That was first one and let me see okay so is this where i'm live okay so i might this right this may, might be where i'm live at right now okay so we all good we all good we can go ahead and kick it off um i want to thank everybody that uh woke up today and is able to be with us mr andrew thomas how we doing thompson uh big chicago uh heavyweight Grand Rising, nice to see you. Ain't seen you in a while. I hope all is truly well with you and your family during these um uh president times, um precedent times right now. You know, we're seeing things that have never happened before. Um, in my opinion, right now, it's the uh a crash of the economy going on, the financial crisis. And this is, in my opinion, once again, because it's only my opinion, but this is one of the best times for individuals to number one, find that niche that the creator gave them in order to bring value into their life versus having to go give up their um life force for that for uh, any type of monetary gain when you yourself are the value you know you could be finding that out right now for those that are without work you know what i mean everybody got a god-given talent and get that and monopolize off of it. um also also this should be the time where you're setting yourself financially straight especially those that if this hit hard and you weren't able to or you're not able to sustain financially right now to whereas you are, um, you know, and you may be very dependent on the stimulus or any type of unemployment checks because one has been unable to put aside any type of savings or assets that may, you know, be able to stand you off for six months, maybe a year if all else fails. Now is the time to be starting to think about, okay, what can I do to, if this ever happens again, you know what I mean? Um, what can I do? to combat this or hedge against this. You know what I mean? It's time to start thinking about those type of things. We do not know what the future holds. Um, I know a lot of people are thinking that, and I hope you're not, that things are just gonna go back to normal in the next you know, month or two. Um, in my opinion, life is not gonna go back to what we deem as normal, what we thought was normal. A lot of businesses are not gonna open back up as people think they are. They're not gonna be hiring that many people as they think they are. Also look for the age of artificial intelligence to come in and replace a lot of individuals from jobs that can be, I mean, artificially done, such as flipping burgers, taking orders. Um, a lot of the more simpler jobs that were once passed down to, you know, the younger teenager uh, group, you know, first jobs, usually McDonald's, Wendy's or something like that. A lot of those spots is not going to be open. You know what I mean? So um, in my opinion, now would be, the, in my opinion, excuse me, now would be the time for individuals to, you know, start building their own businesses and start employing their own uh, family. You know what I mean? Love is law, family is business. So let's go ahead and move forward with the first story. Uh, five things to know for crypto market this week. This was released on April 27th. Um, and from stocks and oil to money printing, Bitcoin's top fundamentals, traders have a lot to consider as the third halving event there. And for those that don't know what the Bitcoin halving is, right? In fact, let, me, let me bring that up real quick. I think there is a couple of individuals that may not understand exactly what's going on um let me see if we got a simple definition here <laughs> bitcoin out in 2020 no one person attendance that's crazy um here we go what is the bitcoin having this should be a pretty okay after every 20 210,000 blocks bitcoin goes through a process called halving this mechanism 
was integrated into the protocol. Let me see, Binance, blah, 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 Binance pool launches its first product. Binance officially enters crypto mining market. Binance pool launches its first product. Okay, that's interesting. Might bring that up. Look at it a little, uh, a little bit later. But um, anyways, the halving mechanism was integrated into the protocol by Satoshi Nakamoto himself or themselves or whoever the individual or individuals are is that created Bitcoin. Um, and what it does is after a protocol goes through a halving, it cuts the supply of new Bitcoins in half. Halving the miners' block production war rewards as well, meaning that the amount of supply that's coming in right now is going to get cut in half within the next. When is the next Bitcoin? Uh, what May? Hold on. When is it? When is it? When is it? Uh, May eleventh. May eleventh. So in roughly about what a little less than two weeks, the supply of bitcoins that are being generated right now from individuals that are mining them are going to be cut in half. A lot of individuals are saying that because of this, price action is supposed to increase. If you look at, you know, how it works with supply and demand, I mean, right now the supply is about to get cut in half. So typically speaking, wouldn't one think that the demand is supposed to go up? I don't know. A lot of people think that the price is already, uh, it is already priced in. Um, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Anyways, the article goes on to state, Bitcoin has consolidated near gains near $8,000. But does the coming week have in store for the asset leaving stocks in the dust? Um, after jumping 10% in a day last week, BTC versus the US dollar has managed to keep holds of its gains over the week. Cointelegraph considers the major factors which traders should keep an eye on to avoid on a nasty surprise. And before we go on, let's go take a look at the chart real quick, actually, with um, Bitcoin. In fact, hold on, let me get all this off of here. Let me clear some of this up. Bam. Get rid of that real quick. Slide that up. Okay, so. This is Bitcoin on a daily chart, meaning that each one of these candlesticks represent a 24 hour uh, price uh, movement. And as we can see, we do have a very nice effect. Let me let's see. Let's bring up a, a brand new one. Bitrix, maybe. OK, so, yeah, we can go ahead and clear this up. Hold on, what was that on a four hour? And yep, this was that, um, this right here was that, and I don't know when I made this, but Brother Michael, uh, for those that are in the uh, private Discord, if you remember, this was that bullish divergence I was speaking about where we had a lower lows on price action, but we had higher lows on um, on the uh, RSI. We see we did break out to the upside from that, so that was nice. We can erase all that, start brand new. Let me see, let me bring this back to a daily. So. Recently, Bitcoin was just trading at 10,000, what, around 10,400 bucks, just around mid -fe uh, February, right? Ended up, and if you look at this, I mean, for those that know technical analysis, you can see that you were steady hitting your head on the RSI being overbought, but all the time you were seeing those higher highs come in on the price action. Now, one would look at this as a divergence, meaning that it is not following um, or not mirroring each other like it should uh, or like it can at, at, at specific times. Such as, okay, we had this divergence here, right? This is also a head and shoulders pattern. But what you had was higher lows on the oscillator. But then you had pretty much, I'm not going to say even, but I mean, from that low, that tick to that tick, it's definitely a downtrend. You know what I mean? So it's showing you that the strength of the, uh, of the asset that you're using the RSI on is growing while price action is going in the opposite direction. Now, the same thing stands for bearish divergence, where you see the strength of the RSI losing, but then you see price action going up. Um, and then that tells you that you should have a sell off. Anyways, right now, what we're doing is we're actually approaching and actually starting to um, get rejected by our previous resistance here. Which actually broke out from a head and shoulders pattern and gave way to our move up to around 89. Was it 89? I think it was around like 89. $88, $8,900. So what we're trying to do is get past this level of resistance here. If we're able to blast past this level of resistance here, in my opinion, we should have a pretty clear shot up to around $8,250, $8, maybe $8,300 before we start meeting another level of resistance or support term resistance. And then we might start getting rejected there. But as of right now, 
All does look kind of well for um, continued movement to the upside. MACD still printing uh, positive momentum. Um, MACD and the signal line are still prostrating to the upside. Your RSI still does have a nice amount of room over here. Nice amount of room to continue to move. So optimistic right now. Um, I, honestly, I was looking for a pullback so that I could see some type of uh, bullish divergence. Didn't get that. Doesn't mean it still can't happen. Uh, so it goes on to say, after jumping 10% in the day last week, BTC versus USD managed to keep hold of its gains over the weekend. Cointelegraph um, considers the major factors which traders should keep an eye on to avoid a nasty surprise. New alarm bells for stocks. Stocks continue to move higher, and Bitcoin continues to move in line with stock market sentiment. While reducing this correlation in recent weeks, Bitcoin, and what that means, reducing this correlation. Correlate means to follow something that have closely related to, or yeah, closely related to, meaning that if you see stocks moving and you see something moving akin to that or almost uh, twin in that, that would be like a correlation, a, 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 a relationship between this. Um, what I'm saying that it's reducing this relationship or reducing that correlation is because Bitcoin's going to move on its own outside of what the stock market is doing. But it says Bitcoin still remains sensitive to major moves on Wall Street. This week, prices there continue to move upwards, but all is not what it seems, analysts warn. Sharp declines in the market breadth in the past have awful, often signaled large market drawdowns. Bloomberg quoted strategist as Goldman Sachs is saying on April 25th. The nail breadth can last for extended periods, but past episodes have signaled below average market returns and eventual momentum reversal. The warning that current swift gains could turn the losses capitalizes on existing concerns about the paradoxical status quo on markets. Despite millions of newly unemployed, small business implosions, and trillions of dollars of money printing, stocks keep improving. Don't fall for the Okie Doke family. Oil prices lose big as trading begins. Oil is steaming ahead with this with this protracted sell-off. In Asia, morning trading in Asian in Asian morning trading on Monday, uh, WTI, which is West West Texas intermediaries, plunged by almost ten percent, while Brent slumped to three point percent near twenty dollars a barrel. Let me take a look at WTI. Okay. All right. Uh, let me see. WTI. Let's look at uh stock. West Texas. Where is West Texas? It would be under the stock market. Let me get this. Let it load up real quick. There we go. Here we go. Man. So yeah, down 4% right now. Oh, let's put this on a weekly real quick. Let's try to open this up. It's not even really letting us. Let me see. Let me get rid of everything that's on here. Remove drawn. Let's uh There we go. There we go. Man, look at that. That's oil. From almost $100 a barrel to right now selling at 12 bucks a barrel. And people are asking, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, well, you know, oil had a real huge sell-off. Should I go buy it right now? It's like, just because something dumped and it's low doesn't mean that it's automatically just going to, you know what I'm saying, shoot right back up and be like, oh, hell yeah, we're getting back rich. You know what I mean? Don't expect these things to just happen because something low, because I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of people that probably bought this dip, which, I mean, the, the more skilled individuals sold off when they got the profit. Other individuals probably held here. Other individuals probably held here. Got wrecked. And you see where we're at right now. You know, so um, just be cautious. But uh, let me see. The story goes on to state that no respite seems in sight for a market hammered by unprecedented negative prices last week. Demand is unlikely to pick up for several months while storage facilities have all but run out. A previous effort by OPEC plus countries to cut production was not enough, commentators have said. Bitcoin is overall impacted less by oil issues than others uh, than those of other markets. Money printing machine can keep, uh, keeps turning. 
Central banks continue to pump more worthless cash into the stricken and increasingly neo-feudal economy. On Monday, it was the Bank of Japan's turn to announce a flood of paper, signaling it would buy unlimited bonds in order to incentivize borrowing. <laughs> Questions remain over whether the United States Federal Reserve and the European Central Bank will follow suit. The former having already inflated its balance sheet to a record $6.6 .6 trillion. Bitcoin fundamentals steadily improved. Bitcoin network participants mean picture is increasing, increasingly and verifiably positive. Cash rate has recovered well since it dipped uh, following the March price crash, consolidating at around 115 quintillion hashes per second. According to estimates from blockchain, this is just seven quintillion hashes per second below all time highs seen earlier last month. Mining difficulty is also set for a healthy uptick of 3.2% at the next adjustment in around 80 days time. This follows a large 8.5% boost that Cointelegraph reported on previous. Overall implied volatility monitoring resource school notes is now at also um, now also almost back at early March level. Analysts dispel myths over May halving downturn. It is now just over two weeks until the third Bitcoin block out reward halving. At that point, Bitcoin's block subsided subsidy will drop from 12.5 Bitcoin to 6.25 BTC per block. This reduces minor income significantly while also drives up Bitcoin stock to flow ratio, as there will be fewer new Bitcoins created relative to the existence of supply. Some analysts have become worried that the drop in revenue will spark problems for miners, but the creator of the seminal stock to flow price model for Bitcoin now believes otherwise. 2012 and 2016 halving data shows the difficulty will not adjust downward, but will keep rising post halving. A sweep from plan B on Friday said. Miners have already invested in new um, hardware and are prepared for a negative 50% revenue. So there's a little story coming out about what individuals can expect coming up. Um, now, I read these just as a broad view of what they're telling the public. Always do your own due diligence. Always check out the charts for yourself. Always come up with your own opinions. You know what I'm saying? Never just follow what any article or even YouTube, even me. You know what I mean? Always come up with your own own uh, understanding of everything. Um, what story was this? Let me stop first. Stop and see if I got any questions, any comments. Let me see who's all tuning in with us right now. As I uh, haven't came back over here to check in a minute. Um, Mr. Rashida, what's going on, Queen? Peace, power, and prosperity. Eighty, what's the word, bro? Brother Michael, brother TJ, top of the morning. Let's see, everybody tuning in on. Uh, you went live if I was uh, because I was oh, okay. You just caught the morning session, and I went live as you was buying crypto. Yeah. Signs and symbols. Who we got coming over here? I have issues understanding the terminology of cryptocurrency. Is there a book or a link that I can use to learn? Definitely, Queen. I have a um. If, if you want, peace, God. What's going on, Brother Tony? If you want, Queen, you can uh actually um hit my inbox, and I have a, a book that's available for beginners on uh, the puzzle. The book does come with a, a thirty minute consultation. If you are interested in that, you can um. Acquire about it in the inbox, and I'll send you the information for that. That's uh, for Miss Campbell over on Facebook. Thank you for the question. And, and, and always remember this: it's not as hard as it seems. None of this is as hard as it seems. Everybody does. None of this is as hard as it seems. Um, just so everyone does know, and those some do know, but I taught my son this when he was what ten years old back in two thousand and seventeen. By the time he was eleven, he had his own YouTube channel showing individuals how he was reinvesting. You know, making his own moves, articulating himself as he made the moves. You know what I mean? So, and this is 2017. We in 2020 now. And this is when I had, I mean, I had nowhere near the amount of knowledge that I have now. You know, what I mean? so if I was able to actually pick it up myself, being brand new to financial instruments, any type, um, even the financial sector, as far as from a more traditional sense, and then being able to pass that information down to him, you know, over almost three years ago, then it. it Believe you me, it's, it's more mental than ever anything. You know what I mean? It may look complicated, but I promise you. I promise you. Um, moving forward. Moving forward. Data shows institutional demand for Ethereum is surging rapidly as ETH 2.0 approaches. So let's go take a look at Ethereum. Let's see. Let's look at, look at it versus Tether on Binance. Open this up to a daily. Now let's step back and, 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 and pay attention to something. Let's look and see where ETH currently was. $1,300. Right now it's at $194. Let's 
Once again, we were at $1,300 right now. It's at $194. Just keep that in mind, first and foremost. Keep that in mind. Um, let's open this up, though. Still staying within the trend of the RSI. For those that are part of the Discord, your, uh, this will be familiar to you, what we're looking at here. Oh, hold on. Let me, uh, let me get rid of that. Get rid of that. There we go. Open that up. So nice. We're still staying within the uh within the channel on the RSI. Still have not broken into the downside. Could see continue to see more upside. Um now you see where we're getting caught up here, right? 50% retracement line, $198. That's where your rejections coming in. In fact, one, two, this is the third day now that you're getting rejected by that 50% retracement line, utilizing the Fibonacci extension tool from swing high to swing low. Those who understand the terminology that I'm using right now. We are hitting the 50% retracement line, which does mean we can't have a pullback here. The 382 comes in at $176. If we were to extend and rally all the way up to the 618, which is the previous support levels before we had to dump, that's around $219, which is where we were expecting to move. But always remember, you can pivot and turn around at any one of these FIB levels. So, um, but let's see what they're talking about as far as the institution demand. Estimated data shows cryptocurrency asset management firm Grayscale. Listen to this. Listen to this. Let me let me pull up who Grayscale is real quick. It's a trust, right? And they invest in cryptocurrency. It's a cryptocurrency trust account. Trust. Let's see what they um. Let's see what they're holding. Let's see how much they're holding. And they call themselves the global leader in digital currency asset management. We offer single asset and diversified exposure in via, uh, via private and public funds. Always remember, family, you got public and you got private. Understand the two don't mix. So this is from February 13, 2019. So we're about a year, year and about what, a couple months ahead, right? Holdings per share and net assets under management for our investment products. The total assets under management, remember, this is a year ago, $793.7 million, right? Keep this in mind. Take a mental photograph. Just a year ago, they were holding under $793.7 million, right? Let's look at what they were holding. So in their Bitcoin trust, they got about 745 uh, million bucks. Bitcoin cash, about 1.9. Ethereum trust, they had about 5.8. And this is interesting. They had more Ethereum Classic than they did Ethereum. That should, that should turn a light bulb on, on in your head. They have the Horizon Trust with only 1.5 million. They did have exposure to Litecoin of only 0.3 million. Uh, interestingly, also, they have Stellar Lumens in their trust, 0.3 million. Um, XRP, they had about 4 million. Then peep the game, right? Privacy Coin, Zcash, 7.2 million. Zcash, Privacy Coin. Interesting. Um, now, let's see. This is 2-13-2019. Let's see what they got today. Remember, this is $793.7 billion. Let's see what they're holding today. So it went from $793 million. We'll just say $794 million. We'll round up. Let's see what they're holding. Let me see what their assets under management are today. But they do keep you updated on it. Here we go. So as of 424.20, they went from $793 million a year ago to $2.7 billion. Let's see what's going on. So the Bitcoin trust, they have over two point. Hold on, I want to compare these real quick. I want to compare these. Hold on. Let's put these uh back to back, shoulder to shoulder. Let's see what they've been growing with. Now, this is just by hodling. Remember, they're not trading. This is just by holding family and accumulating more. That's all they're doing. All right, so 745 million is now 2,333 million. Their Bitcoin Cash Trust is now 3.9 million. What do they have? They have 1.9 million there. Their Ethereum Trust, look at that now, it overshadows Ethereum Classic. Their Ethereum Trust now has $234 million. And that's up from 5.8 million, right? Their Ethereum Classic Trust now has 58 million and that is up from 19 million 
Horizon is now at 2.6, which it was presently at 1.5. Not too much difference there. Their Litecoin is at 0.9. Um, we we're at 0.3 here. So, you know, uh, let me see. Stellar Lumens is at 0.3. Stellar Lumens is still at 0.3. Not too much of a difference there. XRP is at 2.9. They were at the XRP now. Look, the XRP um and assets under management has went down. It was four million over two over a year ago. Now it's only 2.9 million. And Zcash is at 7.6 when Zcash was at 7.2. The huge, the largest growths are out of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ethereum Classic. That's institutional money. And that's crazy. My phone just tried to turn itself on and listen to what I was saying. That's crazy. That's why I just watched my phone just voice activate on its own. I don't, I really ain't, don't be digging these all these artificial intelligence things. But anyways, um, it goes on to state they purchased close to half of all mined Ethereum in 2020. Half of all the mined Ethereum. What's more, with Ethereum 2.0 drawn closer, many have speculated that institutional investors are looking to reap the benefits of each staking. And if you, for those that don't know what staking is, it's almost the equivalent of you getting dividends from you holding a specific digital asset in a um, certain wallet. And you're giving out what's known as a staking reward, which is, like I said, just like dividends in the stock world. You're going to pay out, you know, every week, every two weeks, every month, semi-annually, whatever the case may be, whatever the terms are of the currency that you're staking. Anyway, let's go down to state. Grayscale is currently the world's largest cryptocurrency asset management with $2.2 billion in it. Yeah, what do we got here? Two point seven now. Not at two point seven. Oh, hold on. Where is okay? Here we go. The firm provides digital currency exposure for institutional investors and high net worth individuals. Many individuals have got not a hundred thousand, but maybe a million, two million, maybe a half a million or more. Um, through traditional investment vehicles that have underlying crypto assets. This works via issuance of publicly quoted shares in Grayscale Trust, which are title securities and IRA eligible. The Grayscale Ethereum Trust is their second largest offering in terms of holdings, with 145, 141.5 million under management. Excuse me, which is now 234. While trust performance is negative, both is trailing 12 months and since inception, it was formed only at the tail end of the last bull run. And so has yet to benefit from a complete bull cycle. As such, it's clear that many institutional investors are anticipating big moves from Ethereum going forward. Grayscale hungry for Ethereum? With that, a recent post on Reddit, Reddit analyzed data from Grayscale's 2019 Ethereum, like what we just did. <laughs> they analyzed the uh, data from the 2019 Ethereum Trust Annual Report, which, which when combined with publicly available data, those Grayscale have purchased 48% of all Ethereum mining in 2020 so far. What's interesting about 48%, for those that don't know, anytime I see eight, it's a 44 to me, so that's 444. It's another indication that the fours are um, a very strong number moving forward in 2020, which itself is a four, um, in my mind anyways. Moving forward, a breakdown of the data shows Grayscale Ethereum Trust has a total issuance of 13,255,400 with 5,230,200 shares as of December 31st, 2019. The difference being 8,000. Oh, my fault. Mm -mm. Let me go back and read that again. The Ethereum has a total share issuance of 13,255,400 with 5,230,200 shares as of, 31, uh, as of the 31st of December. The difference being 8,025,200 Ethereum with new shares issued when multiplied by Grayscale's Ethereum per share of uh, 0.09427052, it shows that they purchased 7,500. 756,540 Ethereum in, in 2020. I'm going to say that again. Grayscale purchased over 750,000 Ethereum in 2020. Let's do the math. I damn not want to do the math. 750 at, at $194 a pop, right? And we were just selling at $280, right? So let's just say we just go back up. Not even 1300 Just go back up to previous prices, right? We just go right back up to where we just dropped. From. That's going to bring Grayscale a total return of about 
43% move on the amount of Ethereum that they just bought, massive gain. Always remember this, family. And for those that have taken any type of uh, teaching on to me, I always say this, never about the dollar amount. It's always about the coin count. Keep that in mind as you move forward. On um, publicly available daily puts uh, total Ethereum issuance since the start of 2020 at 1,563,246. As such, 756,540 represents 48% of all mined Ethereum this year. No confirmed release date for ETH 2.0. Institutional investors are betting big on Ethereum. Part of the reason why is undoubtedly the up and coming ETH 2.0 release, which emphasizes the trend towards decentralization. Recognition of the market direction shows that decentralization is more than a buzzword. Indeed, as evidenced by activity on Grayscale's Ethereum Trust, the flow of money signals approval of this trend. Uh, Colin Schwartz of Chainsafe wrote about the dynamics of the outdated proof of work system. He believes Ethereum's move towards a more energy efficient proof of stake model will go some way to democratizing crypto for all. For those that don't know, proof of work, proof of stake, proof of work is how Bitcoin runs, meaning that you need computational power. In order to create the Bitcoin, meaning that you need a lot of energy, meaning that it takes up a lot of energy. Uh, proof of stake is where you just put a currency in a wallet. And from you putting it in a wallet, it's almost the equivalent. I like to look at it as the law of attraction to whereas from you holding this currency in this wallet, you attract more of that currency because you're going to get payouts of that currency. What are known as uh, what are known as staking rewards paid out to you just from holding that currency in that wallet. So no computational power. I mean, hell, you can stake and turn the wallet. Erase the wallet from your there you go. It's still gonna stay. So it's a more energy efficient than proof of work. Um let me see. Yada organize a larger number of much faster and more powerful computers, which gives them a much higher chance of success solving each crypto cryptographic puzzle and earning the reward. Moreover, a successful world 2.0 will put a technological advantage. And combined with Ethereum's network effect and already significant market cap could accelerate a flipping between them. Interesting. With that, for ETH, hi. Confirm release date in their claim. News about Ethereum. Um, moving forward, just getting into something you know of of my favorite. Um, crypto loans for April 2021. We're looking at the DeFi rates here. For those that are familiar with what finance is, it is the I guess evil twin of traditional finance. I don't want to call it evil. It's a good twin of, twin of traditional finance. Uh, traditional finance is the evil twin. But the way that you're able to do traditional space, you're able to do a decentralized finance, space, untraditional finance, space, whether it be um, um, asset management, uh, gaining dividends, um, taking loans, lending money, um, collateralized loans, secured loans, um, under collateralized loans. You know what I mean? You're able to do a number of those um, interest bearing accounts. You know, you can have a savings account over there, having a savings account over here. It's 100 percent up to the individual. Now, the difference is that decentralized finance is permissionless and borderless, meaning that you don't need permission and there's no borders that stopping you for the most part. For the most part. Um, what we're looking at right now are the uh, borrowing rates for uh, April 2020. But let's look at the lending rates. Let's see exactly what we get back right now for lending our funds. out. So right now. Let me let this load up and let this load up. Once again, we're looking at the lending rates because we're the creditor. We want to be creditor. You can be a creditor and a debtor within this relationship. Right now, we're looking at being a creditor. That's why I coined the term secure party crypto creditor. If you, if you ever hear anybody use that, understand that I made that first. Now, I didn't come up with the secure party creditor, secure party slash creditor process, right? Or that term. What I did is added a niche and evolved it, though. So anybody that's familiar with that, I created the secure party crypto credit. Secure party slash crypto. What we're doing is crediting individuals with crypto. Anyways, um, right now Dai is giving you three percent on uh compound. Let me see. That's the highest percentage right now. Um, USDC right now 05 percent, one point six percent on DYDX, four percent on Nuo. ETH right now the highest. Fulcrum is giving you one point four percent, four point five percent on BlockFi. Um, also I don't know if individuals are familiar with um then what's the name of it there we go bank of hodlers but you're also um for anyone that does uh utilize this platform in fact i'm gonna put a link in the uh description 
Um, this is a platform that does allow for individuals to earn up to 11.5% interest on your crypto. They are secured and insured by BitGo. For those who don't know who BitGo is, they are the top leading in asset, uh, digital asset protection. Um, so this is who is securing your funds being placed in here. Now, this is, in a sense, decentralized. Um, it does take an email to create, but you are able to connect your Web3 wallet and integrate and um, move it smoothly and effortlessly place your funds in here. Um, these are the amount of interest rates that they're giving out right now. 7.13% for Bitcoin, 11% for DAI, 11% for true USD, um, 7% for Ethereum, 4% um, for X. XRP, 3% for XLM, 3% for BAT, 11% for USDC, 11.5, 11.5 for Bit, uh, Binance USD, which they just integrated, 11.5% for Paxos, and 11% uh, percent for USD. Effective interest rate calculated by 11% uh, percent and 7% APR compounded monthly. Compounded monthly. So um, what I'll do is I'll get the link to this. I'll log in on a uh, totally different, another screen. And I'll get the link and I'll, uh, that will allow everyone to uh, if you choose to sign up, they do give you a, a, a initial deposit of ten dollars in um, Bitcoin. Now, you don't have to put anything in here. Um, you don't have to. This is the thing. This isn't like a sign up, whereas, OK, I have to spend money in order to get something. These are for assets that you're already holding. You know what I mean? These are for assets that you're already holding. Um. Just to gain interest on them. Hold on, give me one second. What is this? everything's still going through? Okay, hold on, give me one second. Let me go ahead and get in here, put in my two factor. There we go. Let me go ahead and do this, in fact. Let me get my link. And let me see if there's any questions about this platform. If there's any questions about anything we've gone over, in fact, uh, as of yet. Let me post this. I'll be posting this on uh, both Facebook and YouTube for those that might be interested. Do you an do you do, do analysts of particular crypto blockchains? OX will love your insight. Yeah, I'll take a look at OX. I'm actually... Uh, I'm actually involved in OX right now. ZRX, if that's the one you're talking about, I do have stake in that one. Total, total um, I do have stake in that one. Just so you know. Um, let me see. Oh, give me a give me a minute. Let me make this public too. I do apologize for those that are watching on Facebook. This is not a public. Let me go ahead and pub make this public. I do apologize. Cause I, I forgot my page be on private. So let me make this a public uh watch so anybody can uh tune in. There we go. Now it's public. Now when you when you tag people, they'll be able to tune in. They'll be able to tune in. Um, let me see. Yeah, we can take a look at OX in a minute. We'll take a look at OX. Moving forward though. So looking at some of these loan uh interest rates, right? These are this is the interest that you get for being a creditor and a number of different currencies. A number of different currencies. Let's run through this. Um it says perhaps one of the most exciting aspects of decentralized finance is the ability to take out a loan on top of cryptocurrencies at any time in an entirely permissionless fashion. By using smart contracts, borrowers are able to lock collateral to protect against defaults while seamlessly adding to or closing their loans at any time. This page is geared at, looking at, is geared at those looking to dive into the exciting world of DeFi borrowing and our top picks of the platform to take out a cryptocurrency loan. Let me see, I wonder who their top picks are. We got Ave, Compound, Maker, DYDX. Okay, let's see what they got to say. An overflow of DeFi loans. Overview, excuse me. Um, here are some key characteristics of DeFi loans or decentralized finance loans. Permissionless, as I said, anyone can borrow cryptocurrencies without having to undergo KYC, which is know your client, know your customer, or get permission from a third party, counterparty, middleman, bank, no paperwork, no signing, no name, no social. This is completely decentralized. It's automated. Loans are automatically dispersed at request. With positions being liquidated if a collateralization ratio falls below the predefined threshold. Now, I know when some people see automated, they already, for those that have been here for a couple of years, you may start thinking BitConnect, Laser Online, USI Tech, and the sort of those platforms that allow for individuals to put their money in and we're supposed to get back an automatic interest. This is nothing like that. These are all ran by smart contracts, but all is not truly just 100% 
squeaky clean. You can't have bugs in a contract or a code can be written incorrectly as well. So always keep that in mind. But this is nothing like the BitConnect. This is nothing like the Hyatt area or the HYIPs, high yield investment platforms. Nothing like that. Um, these are non-custodial, meaning that you do not give up custody of your coin. And that's the biggest thing in this space. And that's the biggest thing that I push, the biggest thing that I teach. I'm not having individuals sign up and send their money anywhere that they may not be able to get it back um for any reason because they've given up actual custody of it. um over here with DeFi loans there's no need to transfer ownership of the underlying collateral all funds are secured by smart contracts and the borrower being responsible for maintaining that position they're secure major borrowing protocols have been rigorously audited and you can check out a number of the audits on um oh, who's that Somebody. um Who's been auditing everybody? Hold on. They've been audited. I'm talking about they're like the top auditors in this space. Who, who is it? So, ain't them. Let me see. Let me look up Instagram's audit. Open Zeppelin. That's their name. Open Zeppelin. If you ever want to see if, a, if the platform that you're using has been audited, and in fact, let me do this for those who don't know what audit means. The official inspection of an individual or organization's accounts, typically by an independent platform, just so that we know what audit. That means people are coming through and checking your books, checking your code, seeing if there's weaknesses in the code or anything like that. Let's go to Open Zeppelin. And for those that want to check it out, it's Open Zeppelin. O O P E N Z E P P E L I N dot com. Let's look at their security audits. And they have audited a huge amount of this decentralized finance. Basically, you're gonna see here in a minute. So they did pull together. This is um, this is a no loss lottery right here. I'm, man, there's so much stuff in there. Um, DYDX, perpetual audit, backdoor analysis, auger, compound, alpha governance system. They just audited them. The open oracle audit. Um, let me see, where are They got a whole nother list though of all the artists that they've done. Ave, um, Eco Contracts, uh, More Compound Finance, Instadaps Audit, Libra. Um, yeah. So you always want to check and see if a platform has been audited or not. Uh, where do we leave off at? Okay, yeah. Major borrowing protocols have been rigorously audited, some of them, uh, meaning that funds supplied to loans are backed by the most robust code in the world. Um, this is a dynamic space. The vast majority of borrowing in DeFi leverages variable interest rates if relative to the utilization ratio of any given asset. Perpetual. De perpetual means there's no limit on it. But uh, it says DeFi loans can be open for any amount of time so long as the debt is paid back and the position is sufficiently collateralized. Meaning that there's no time limit on the loan over here, family. There's no 30 day, 60 day, 90 day. The loan is as long as you need it, as long as you want it, as long as the collateralization that you put to the side is withstanding and sustaining that loan. Um, uh, do we want to get into all the platforms? What time is it? Now I got a consultation coming up. I'm not going to get into all the platforms, um, but I did want to just give you a basic introduction. Um, I guess we can give an introduction of them. Um, you do have Ave, which is a borrowing platform, offers the most diverse amount of loan types. Ave is quickly becoming a market leader in the DeFi sector as a whole. The protocol features roughly 20 of the most popular cryptocurrencies, including most major stable coins and DeFi tokens like SNX, MKR, and KNC, which is a network token, MakerDAO, and Kyber Network Crypt. Um, the more you come into this space, you'll get familiar with these acronyms as well. That's who that Compound. The state says, as the sector leading lending platform, Compound has the long established itself as having a strong foundation for trusted cryptocurrency loans. While Compound supporters, while Compound supports fewer assets than Ave, it boasts very liquid capital pools and has been trusted and has been trusted many DeFi protocols as a base for other interest earning primitives to emerge. Meaning that there's a lot of pro protocols out there that people use. That actually copied and utilized the compound code in order for their own platform to uh work and gain interest. This is the, uh one of the main ones I introduce people to. Anyone that's ever took my boot camp, any one of my in-house digital banking uh classes, uh, any of the sort, anything DeFi related, you already know compound is our go-to. Next we have Maker. As the creator of Die, Maker has created quite an interesting cycle for taking out a loan on a stable, trustless asset. Using Oasis Borrow, users can lock collateral. Currently, Ethereum, United States dollar coin, or basic attention token, the mint die. 
lot collateral includes a stability fee, which can be paid back at any time. Now, when you look at Maker, you want to look at Maker almost as this: you are going to input gold or silver into a banking or a financial institute, and that financial institute is issuing you gold or silver certificates based off the amount of collateral and gold and silver you put in there. So, if you want to take your gold and silver out, what you got to do is bring back those gold and silver certificates and come in, and then you get your gold back, and they burn those gold and silver certificates so they um circulation. That's the same thing that's going on with the fee plus. This is no different from the traditional finance system that we currently live in. It's just been turned inside out so that we can see it, we can use it, and, and monetize off. Man, I know I'll be long-winded, talk fast. I have a lot to get out. I hope y'all able to listen fast. Anyways, I guess we can get to the technical analysis part of this now. Just take a look at a couple of these points. Let me get rid of all this stuff. Let's just look at a couple of um, moving averages and see how we are compared to them. Okay, let's leave our volume on for our moving averages back on. There we go. Um, looking at the daily with Ethereum, very nice. You're above all major moving averages. 21-day uh, exponential has crossed over the 200-day exponential, which is very, very, very bullish. This is usually the beginning. Can be if it sustains. Let's see what's happened in the past. Anytime we've crossed over that um, that 21-day, that 21 crossing over that 200-day moving average after an extended downtrend. So this was an extended downtrend from 2017. You can see all major moving averages to the downside. Then what happened? Let me open this up. You have the seven day, excuse me, 21 day exponential moving average, which let me let me do this. Let me do this. There we go. So you got this red line right here that starts to cross over the other exponential moving averages. Then it crosses over the 200 day exponential moving average. And that triggers the bull run from about. What? We want to say May of 2019 at around 180 bucks, all the way up to about $310. So you're looking at about, about a 72% increase. And then we have a, a downtrend, right? What happens? Downtrend ends here, 21 day. Crosses back over the 200-day exponential around $170. Once again, around $180 mark. This time, we only get a move up to about $268, creating a lower high. But it still gave back about a 50% return. Not bad. Now, once again, with Ethereum, we have that crossover. So let's see. Let's just say that we did want to create a... Um, let's say we did want to create a lower high, right? And I'm doing this kind of shoddy with the moving averages. Ah, uh, hold on. I forgot I had all that on here. Um, okay, well, this is still decent. Let me see. I guess I can take this, move this here real quick. Take this. And I'm, I'm measuring the moving averages, which you really don't do. Um, move this here. There we go. All right, so per the moving averages, your 50% comes in at around 195, which you haven't made it to yet. Your 618 is around 212. Um, so we can see a move. If this is if this is continuing the downtrend, because what you'll usually see, right? What you'll usually see is a six a 382 to a 618 retracement, and then that original move continuing the trend that it was going. Let's just say if this is just part of one big down. All right, let's open this up. Let me, let me take a look. Get rid of that. Close this down a little bit. Hold on, give me one sec. Let me let me remove our drawing tool. Let's put this back on here. Okay, so that one's not going to suffice. That one is, is too drawn out, it's too low. Not going to be able to really use the fib on that one. What we can use the Fibonacci on is this last uh, move that we had to the downside. Let me get rid of this. Let me grab this. And let's do a swing high to a swing low, right? So swing high, swing low, what do we have? Roughly a 618 retracement. Let me open this up for those that may not be able to see. There we go. Hold on, let me uh let me refresh the page. Because I blew it up so y'all can see it better. It's hiding my fib levels. I want you to be able to see the Fibonacci retracement levels. I don't think we got any coin requests right now. I think we got any coin requests. Let's 
Uh, yes, Ms. Page. Uh, that's exactly why investors are attracted to Ethereum because they're building a the new financial system on Ethereum. Everything that I do in the DeFi space, all the banking platforms that are used, all the loaning platforms, well, not all of them, but a huge majority of the new financial sector is being built on Ethereum, not on Bitcoin. Glad I relinked back up with you. I had no idea the stuff was going on. Exactly, Brother Curtis. There's a lot of individuals that don't really know the totality or the depths that the crypto market um, is going. You know what I mean? A lot of individuals don't know. So definitely, definitely happy you uh, you were able to tune in with us. So let me look at this one more time. I'm going to have to end this in a minute, though, because I do have a, a, a consultation coming. up. But what do we want to look at here? OK, let's add this back on. Get rid of these, though. Wait, no, not the volume. That's what we're going to get rid of. Moving averages. And um, this is a nice measured move that I did. Uh, ascending triangle, breakout, move from 150 to 185, hit with precision, and then back tested or fell back, retraced after that. Very nice one. For those that are part of the Discord, we were able to play this move. This is what? This is about a 24% move. Very nice. Hit. Started retracing after that. Nice. Let's do this, though. Let's get rid of that. For those that are not or are interested in joining the Discord, um, the first of the month is coming up. You know, if you're interested, hit the inbox, hit the DM. Um, we, I mean, a very nice community over there. Beautiful community over there. A, a, a beautiful set of brothers and sisters that are very helpful for anyone coming in the mix. Okay, so that's that, right? So we're coming up on our 618. And then if we look back at the last go around, right? And if we, let me see, let me turn on my magnet. There we go. Let's look at the last one and see what it gave us. 618 retracement. Your normal levels of retracement are between the 382 and the 618. And then look, you came back down, retested the 382, bounced back up one more time, got rejected by the 50% retracement line. That was your that was the get out. You know what I'm saying? For anyone that caught in and was able to trade it like that, that was your get out. And then you dumped from there. Came back up. Now look at this. The 236 was acting as your resistance level on the way back up. Rejected, hop back up, now using it as, as support. So now utilizing this fib level, your 382 comes in at 213, your 50 comes in at 240. So we can look at this trying to get extended to the 213 or the 382, which is $213. Let me see if we got any questions or comments. Family, this is the time for AMA. Ask me anything, questions, comments, point requests, any of the sort um, before I get up out of here. I do thank any and everybody that tuned in with me for this early reaction show of Coffee and Crypto. I appreciate you all. So if you got any questions or comments or anything, please let me know. Let's go take a look at, um, let's get rid of all this, though. And let's just focus on really and get rid of this over here. Open this up a little more. We can really just use our moving averages to see what price action may be. Man, look at that four hour. Nice. Now, peep out of four hour. Um, you tend to come back down and retest the what do I got on here? Oh, I did add those 100 and 200 moving averages. Came back down to test the purple line. Came back down to test the purple line here. So don't think you can't come back down to test the purple line here at 184 and then continue to rally there. You know what I mean? Always be mindful of that. Moving averages can be used as supporting resistance levels. And I do use them as such. Let's see. Let's go with the big head honcho Bitcoin and see what's going on with him. Uh, we can look at Chicago Mercantile Exchange. We can look at, actually look at CME. Let me turn this back. There we go. So um, on the daily, on the daily, interestingly enough, Bitcoin is below all move, all major moving average. Well, not all. Um, below a majority. No, this is the market cap. Excuse me. Go down. There we go. Here go the futures. Here go the futures. There we go. So we can see the seven. Excuse me. I don't know why I keep saying seven day. The twenty one day exponential has moved past the fifty and the one hundred day exponential. You did come up. Let's see what happened now. Let me see what all. Let me get rid of. What do I want to get rid of? Here? Let 
Ah, oh, you know what? Okay, I see what this is. Let me change these over. It, it, it is. It, that's why I keep calling it the seven day because these is my fib levels. I'm thinking these are what are my favorites at. Where's my favorites? Here we go. Here we go. Hold on. Let me get rid of these. Let me add these. Make sure everything is color coded the way that I like it. Take these off. I don't want my moving. I just want the exponential moving averages for now. There we go. So I got a 21 and 55 and 100 and 200 day exponential moving average. What are we looking at? We're looking at support. Hold on. We're looking at support at the 55 day moving average, right? Resistance coming in, resistance coming in from the 100 day exponential moving average, which keeps rejecting. You can see the wicks getting rejected from there, meaning that we have to get above 7,800. Meaning we've reached 7,800 on CMEs already. We got to get back above 7,812, start printing these one uh, daily candlesticks, even if we can close above 7,800. That can give us a push back up to 79 and our um, our continue moving back up to eight thousand dollars. This is on a daily. Let me see. What is a weekly telling us? There we go. Now, weekly looking nice, but you are getting rejected by the 21 day exponential. And you do have a uh, bearish crossover of 21 crossing over the 55 day. Exponential. So looking at this on a weekly, which is a more drawn out chart, right? Your expectations is to break eight thousand dollars on a weekly. Break eight thousand dollars, hold, and hopefully we can open up above seventy-eight to eight thousand dollars on a weekly right now. Because last week we opened at seventy-two, closed at seventy-five. This week we opened at seventy-six. Um, right now we're closing at seventy-seven fifty. Well, I want to see us close this above maybe the twenty. The twenty-one comes in at seventy-eight thirty-eight. Let me see. Let me get a close above maybe seventy-eight fifty, seventy-nine hundred, maybe even eight thousand. Let's get that opening. Which that next opening, you may see that double tweezer bottom top out, pop back down around 72. Then you could see a continuation there. But what you're looking for typically is a continuation and support found where re uh, recently there was resistance. So all this resistance right here, you want to turn this into support base. Universal faith. Peace, peace, peace. How's everybody doing? Okay, OX. Let's take a look at OX real quick. Take a look at OX real quick. DRX. Um, Queen, if you want, you could um, what's that? Somebody said that they're new to this. Um, for those that don't know, I do have a book available for beginners. Um, it does come with a thirty-minute consultation with myself. Um, Miss Un uh, Universal Faith. If you want, you can DM me, inbox me, uh, Facebook, Instagram. Um, in fact, you can actually uh, email me as well, Chicago Crypto Hustler. In fact, I will put. In fact, you know what? I'll get a link to my website. My apologies. Let me get a, uh, actually get a link to my website real quick, and I'll actually post that. Um, let me see. Let me get a link to my website real quick and I'll post that on both ends. That way individuals can tune in with me. Give me one second. Let me get that for you. And I'll post this on both ends. That way individuals can uh, tune in with me as well. Facebook and YouTube. Coming in on the Facebook side and I'm about to come place it over on the YouTube side as well. There we go. All right, so let's go take a look at ZRX. And we can look at it versus the US dollar versus Tether. Let's see, daily. Nice. Look at that extension. Just breaking the 100 day exponential moving average. Very nice on the daily. Um, looking at extension up to around 21 cent. Be mindful that we just did come from a drop of 
what about 34 cent? Let's see what we got going on here. So yeah, you're just coming in contact with the 382, which is at 2050. Right now you're at 2021. Right now you're being rejected by the 382 fib level on a swing high, swing low retracement. Um, if you're gonna continue, if you're just looking for uh the normal play of a swing high, swing low, you're usually looking to take profit around the golden, depending on when you entered. Um, you can either look to take profit around these areas or look for these areas of as a um a reason to short or an area to short. And that would be specifically between, let me get it real quick. This area right here. So the 382 to the 618. This is your normal level of retracement. This is your normal level of retracement. So we can see um DRX possibly continue on to 23 to 26 cents. And then I would probably come back, recoup, look and see how we're looking from there to see if we're gonna get extension or a pullback from there. But right now you are getting rejected by the 382. You do gotta get past 2025. You gotta get, I mean 2050. Where are we at right now? 20, 2021. You do got to get past 2020, uh, 2015, and you can uh, proceed to the 50% retracement, which is at uh, 2340. Remember, these are, are uh, cents, so 23 cents, 20 cents, 23 cents. MACD is looking good. You do have positive momentum. MACD and signal line continuing to the upside. MACD looks very good. Uh, RSI, you are, okay, you got a little wiggle room. You got a little wiggle room. We can see back here we were highly overbought. So you got a little wiggle room to the upside still. So um, I don't see anything really stopping ZRX right now from continuing this uh, uptrend other than the 382. Other than the, other than the FIB level, I really don't see anything else stopping this from continuing to the upside. Now, does that mean it's going to continue to the upside? That don't mean nothing. My opinion means absolutely nothing. Play this how you play it. You know what I mean? But this is what this is what I will uh, be projecting. If I end it anywhere around these levels, I'll be looking to take profit. Uh, partial here, partial here, then the rest there, or you know what I mean? Depending on how you play it. Always remember this is not financial advice in any way, shape, or form. Since we've been on BT, since BTC went down, since we've been on BTC went down, oh, that's, that's $50. Look, everything goes up and down. Everything goes up and down all day, every day. It never stops. You're going to see this stuff go down 50, down 100. Remember, this is a $7,000 asset right now. But we're going down 50, 50 bucks. And always remember this. Everything is measured in percentages. Right? That's one thing I need everyone to understand. Everything is measured in percentages, right? So it's not that it went down 50 bucks. It's how much percent did it lose. Let's, let's, look, at this. let's look at, let's see. Let's look at, um. and I got to go after this because it's coming on 830. I, I, I got to uh, be gone and set up, ready to go in about another half hour. So let's look at spot price. Let's bring it down to a, hold on real quick. There we go. Let me move all this out the way. Let me get rid of all this. Um, bam. Let's move to a. I don't know. You know I'm gonna have to leave that on. Let me. Uh, let me find a clear chart. Here we go. Let me grab this. Put this on a five minute. Three and five minute. Fifteen minute. There we go. Let's look at a fifteen minute chart and let's just measure this from our recent high here. To our recent low, and you're only at a 1.7 percent loss. Not bad. 1.7 percent to the downside, um, from 7,800 down to 76. What is that? On um, 76.5. Right now, currently though, you're down about 1.2 percent. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Litecoin taking a beating here. Probably come back down. Let me see what is this a four hour? Litecoin could probably come back down to around 43 between between 42, upper 4280 to 4320. Possibly bounce there. Let me see what we got going on here, if anything. Bring us back out to a daily. 
There we go. So let's see, if this was an ascending triangle, right? Let's see. Let's see if 382 was our, let's say this right here was our resistance level, right? Let's play this out. That means what we got, uh, get rid of this. So we got our resistance here, right? This is our ascending triangle. So we see that, let's say if we can break here, we can see a move up to about here, which is 63, whatever, right off the 618, <laughs> nice. So measured move breaking out of this ascending triangle, you should uh, be able to see a rally from around where you're currently at up to about $60. I'll call it 60 bucks. 618 is at $61 in all actuality. So that's Litecoin, not bad. That's called a pattern. That's called um, identifying a pattern and measuring the move of that pattern. Let me see. Ethereum monster. Ethereum been a monster. This thing just continued to rally. Uh, let me see. Let me make sure if we got any questions, comments. Anything before I end this? Yeah, family. Any questions or comments or anything before I end this show? From anybody? Got a couple of minutes, about not even, about two, three minutes. Well, depending on how many questions or comments fall, fall in. If none, I'm going to go ahead and end this now. I do want to thank any and everybody that tuned in with me for the early rise of show of Coffee and Crypto. I do thank you. So right now what I'm doing, I'm just waiting for any type of questions, any type of comments, any questions or any comments. That's all I'm waiting for right now. Any questions or comments? If not, once again, like I said, I thank everybody for tuning in. The Bitcoin block bully. Just giving it a couple, couple uh, minutes. Just giving it a couple minutes. to make sure i don't have any questions or comments from the community and i do know that it's a lag too so it's probably coming in a little bit later than when i'm saying it that's why i'm trying to open it up and give everybody a little bit of time to comment if anybody does want to comment balancott i don't even know what balancott is i'll, I'll take a look at it real quick balancott let me see Balancott. I'm not seeing anything come up what a Balancott is. Balancott, Balancott. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything come up, Queen. I'm not getting anything from that. Link. Ah, oh, Balancor. Okay. Balancor. Okay, so not a coin. Hmm. Balancer? Are you talking about balancer? Oh, you're talking about balance got finance. Just, just, just talking about this. Non-custodial portfolio management, liquidity provider, and spice sensor, price sensor. This is basically where you deal with liquidity pools over here for the most part, where you're able to invest in liquidity pools, and you're also able to like buy and sell liquidity pools. Um, I've actually been doing boot camps down there every day for the last three weeks, more than one. So I haven't had time to really dive in and utilize this yet. So I'm not going to give my opinion on it until I use it. But um, very interesting platform, if, if this is the one you're speaking on. Let's see. Uh, link. I 
Oh, okay, that's right. Let's look at link. Link versus USD. Link coming for uh link like looking like it's coming in for a pullback here. Let's see, what are we hitting? Hmm. Yep. So you can see with Link, you've had your 618 retracement. You got rejected, got rejected. You're steady getting rejected right here by the 618. With um chain link, I will wait to see how it fares out with this three dollar and eighty cent uh resistance and see if I can hold a three dollar and forty cent three forty uh excuse me support three forty support three eighty resistance that's what I'm looking at with link either you're gonna um crash below the fifty and go back down to the thirty eight or you're gonna breach the six one eight and continue to the uh seven eight six you see Adam on the other hand Adam just uh broke through the three eight two look at that nice back test of the three eight two as support. Nice. What you want to see? Nice back test of the three eight two of support. If you can hold the support, probably see continuation to the upside past the fifty percent. You do have the one hundred day exponential coming in, knocking you out as resistance coming in at around two fifty nine, two ninety five. So get past around, we'll say three dollars. You can get an extension to around three nineteen. If you lose the three eight two, you will have support coming in from the fifty five coming in around two sixty. But most likely, look for the uh one day to pick you up at around two forty five. All right, with that being said, I got to get out of here, family. I thank everybody that tuned in. Peace, power, and prosperity. Love to the multitude. I'm out. Damn, I should have recorded this on the podcast. Ah, right, well, I'm gone, family.